Hello and welcome to What Are You Saying? Hashtag Ways, where we talk about topics in the news as it affects us all. I am Osayome Sali and today I have Dee with me. Hello. Hi Dee Olin. Good, thank you. How are you? Good. How was your week? How was the... What was it though? What was it? What was it? What was it? Was it a holiday before now? No. Just no, today's... just today. So what did you do today? In celebration of Democracy Day? Nothing. Really? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how was your day? Oh, how is your day going? My day is still going. Uh, after now, I have a meeting. We wow. do one hour meeting wow. on Zoom, and I think I have a date. I'm not sure. <laughs> I have a lot to go on a date. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go for dinner. Mm. Yeah. This long postponed date is kind of like business. Oh, okay. So let me not call it date before they come for me. <laughs> yeah. That kind of thing. Yeah. Um, Norma is supposed to be joining us via Zoom. I don't know if Norma can hear us. Mm. Okay, so, um, Norma, are you there? Did you hear something? Oh, I heard something. Yes, sir. I'm here. Can you hear me? Oh, we can hear you. Norma, fan. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How was Hi. your day? It was um, it was uh, all shades. I was mostly tired, uh, for the fact that it's the beginning of the week. It's not um, uh, it's not a position you want to be to start the week. But yeah, it uh, it went on as possibly could, mm. and we're here now. Okay, okay, well done. We're almost there. So my last lap you did now. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting. I didn't even have a break this weekend. Like I was around the yeah, clock. Yeah. Sunday. The weekend I was, was very busy for I me. I was still too. working, doing mm. different things. And next weekend is going to be interesting too. Mm. So this way. All right. So, O oh God of creation, direct mm. our noble cause, guide our leaders right, help our youth, the truth to know that is we are saying happy democracy day nigeria so tonight in conjunction with enough is enough nigeria we will focus on the history of democracy in nigeria till date so i'll start off you know giving a background mm. from my slides um if we can project it yeah so i mean june 12 1993 nigeria had what is considered its freest, fairest, and most peaceful election till date. Mm. Um, MKO Abdullah won, but of course it was annulled by the administration of then President, um, uh, Head of State, uh, yeah. Babangida. Um, so his wife, Kudirat Abiola, was assassinated on June 4th, 1996. Abiola tried to reclaim his mandate. He was then arrested and eventually died in custody. Um, of the federal government uh, on the 7th of July in 1998. So other Nigerians were also killed in that fight to reclaim um, this mandate of June 12. Mm. Um, so, uh, I mean, it's so interesting. Uh, I wish RDD were here because mm. he was telling me a few stories how some people had to flee. Even now, yeah. our president had oh, to yeah, flee a lot of Nigeria, asylum, yeah. you know, to go seek asylum in the UK for a bit and all of that. So a lot of them were arrested. They were thrown in jail. You know, it was such, you know, an eventful day. And it's just um, so surreal that now we get to, like, you know, honor the struggles of that yeah. particular day and, you know, eventually and i mean that's one of the legacies of president muhammad Bari. but let me come to you uh i think you're next or is it noma no, no, no. you're next all right so in uh continuing from where you stopped in may on may 29 in 1999 the fourth republic began with uh, president olusha gobasanjo being sworn in and that was the second time in nigeria's history that an elected an elected civilian administration will succeed a military government. And same May 29, it was adopted as Democracy Day and a public holiday. But however, Lagos and Oshun continue to celebrate the June 12th, June 12th as Democracy Day. 
and uh, also as a public holiday. And um, present day, June 6th, actually, in 2018, President Muhammad Buhari was recognized or has had recognized that June 12th was more meaningful to Nigerians as Democracy Day instead of May 29th. And from then on, June 12th became the Nigerians Democracy Day and the public holiday that is now used to celebrate that Democracy Day presently. Mm. Awesome. Back to you, Uwa. Okay. Awesome. I'll come to Diola. <laughs> okay, so the 30th anniversary of the historic elections and the fifth year of June 12 as Democracy Day. That's this year. Now, while celebrating June 12 is important, a frank narrative of the complex and complicated roles of different actors is missing. Telling the story will help learn critical lessons about our history and ourselves. And I think that's absolutely true. We must, I mean, there were a lot of people, like you rightly mentioned at the beginning, a lot of people were part of the struggle yeah, yeah, for us to get to where we are now. Now, um, the president is the highest elected office. However, the office of the citizen is the highest office in the land as citizens do the elections. Once the court cases are over, find out who represents you through our WhatsApp chat box and engage them. And that's one of the best ways to honor democracy. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And to know more about this chat box, you know, um, um, to know your elected officials, to also know your governors, your senators, House of Representatives, um, House of Assembly members, local government chairmen, and councillors, the Office of the Citizen Chat Box. Just say hello on WhatsApp to 01 700 -6381. I mean, um, the reason, and I keep, I would keep on every opportunity I get every Monday to re-emphasize why we're doing this in partnership with yeah. Enough is Enough. You need to be informed, Absolutely. right? Part of what kills us as a people is not so much of the kinds of things that are going on. It is the, the, the lack of information. information yeah. Whilst we do this in partnership with Enough Enough, we are also learning, Right. The important thing is once you are knowledgeable enough in a subject matter, you are able to tell what is propaganda. Yeah. You are able to tell what is fact. You're able to tell what is real. You're able to, you know, bring back history. So nobody comes and bamboozles you. Absolutely. And you are acting an agenda without even knowing. Because if you look at the Nigerian political space, there's a lot of things going there's a lot on. Of a lot of stories. Dramas, yeah. Right? Yeah. But you see, the intelligent people and the well-informed people you know, they stay quiet, not because they don't have things to say, but because they know better. You know, so engaging the citizens and teaching us, you know, is part of what the core of Enough, enough, eh, enough is Enough is. And that's why we're happy, mm. you know, to take on this time every single Monday, yeah. you know, to bring different, um, what's it called, different um, research so you understand and learn. Mm. You know, tomorrow we are now asking better questions, more intelligent yeah. questions. We're not just throwing tantrums. We are actually engaging most of our elected leaders intelligently, right? So once we come with intelligence, when we, once we come with information, right, they'll be forced to listen to us. They'll be forced to back down. They'll be forced to do the needful. They'll be forced to govern, True. you know? So it's no longer going to be business as usual when they are dealing with an educated bunch. Yeah. So we need to educate ourselves about national is issues, political issues, issues around governance, around leadership. That way we can really truly make this country, you know, a better country and make it, you know, the kind of country that we'll be proud of to say, yes, I am Nigerian. Mm. All right. So on that note, here's what we found as today's quote. We have more conversations today because it's just us, right? Today's quote, um, of course, is in line with what we're discussing. He says, I admit, and this is from the president, that the decision will impose an extra burden on the masses of our people. This one decision that we must bear to save our country from going under. And this was a quote that was made today by the president, Bola Ahmed Tunumbu. Now, the federal government... Um, 
the Federal Republic rather, of Nigeria has addressed the subsidy issue, removal issue that was announced during um, the president's inauguration just a few, um, few weeks ago. Now, in his speech today, uh, marking, of course, Nigeria's Democracy Day, he noted that the sacrifice of the citizens will not be in vain. And today we will be discussing the topic, do Nigerians have to suffer for the survival of Nigeria? That's the conversation we're having today. We'll do all of that, but first, let's quickly run off. When we come back from the break, we want to see what we found in the news. All right, you are still watching Ways Now. Democracy Day is a national public holiday in Nigeria, and until um, June 6, 2018, it was held annually on May 29th. Um, uh, so Democracy Day marks the, the day the military handed over power to an elected civilian government in 1999, marking the beginning of the longest continuous civilian rule since Nigeria's independence from colonial rule in 1960. It is a tradition that has held uh, or that has been held annually um, beginning in the year 2000. Now, June 12 was formerly known as a Biola Day, celebrated only in Lagos, Nigeria, and some southwestern states of Nigeria. But today, um, thanks to President Muhammadu Buhari, um, the day is being um, celebrated as our national democracy day in honor of those that fought and lost their lives you know just to um give us you know a democratic government or leadership all right so let me come to you noma if i what did you find for us in the news today all right i came across this story uh, about a nigerian uh, and the story had it that six swiss cops face manslaughter charges over the death of a Nigerian. So six Swiss police officers um, appeared in court today over the death of a Nigerian man who had a fatal heart attack after he was pinned down during an arrest in 2018. And uh, these uh, Officers were white officers and were accused of homicide through negligence in relation to the death of this 39-year-old Nigerian. His name was Mike Ben Peter, and he uh, the, the situation surrounding his death was that uh, uh, it was it was a situation where he was trying to be arrested. According to them, the officers first noticed him during a drug patrol. And after a bag he collected was showed to contain marijuana, the, uh, Peter, and that Peter himself did not comply with police requests, the officers used pepper spray and kicked his knees um, and uh, his ribs and groping him, got him down to the ground to handcuff him. But after a while and the struggle, while he struggled, it was his head was held face down and after a few minutes, it was noticed that he had appeared to be unconscious. These police officers, of course, have uh, pleaded not guilty, stating that there were other factors that uh, caused his death. But today they've been arraigned and uh, they face possible uh, um, um, likelihood of being in prison for three years or so. Uh, it's really unfortunate, the situation surrounding his death. But we continue to see situations like this, especially when it, it's concerning either black men, not just Nigerian. I remember the time where the Black uh, Lives Matter situation ensued. It was about policeman handling. And even in Nigeria, we've seen several cases of police being irresponsible in the way that they handle people that may be su uh, suspected of crime one way or the other. So I think that these reforms is not just uh, concerning Nigerian police force or, I mean, it's, I think it's a general police situation that really needs to be reconsidered across board because it seems that when you have that level of power, 
Sometimes it is impossible for you to control the urge to suppress others with that power. And this is something that uh, government, state governments of or countries need to begin to be mindful of and begin to to look for avenues to address as quickly as possible so that situations like this can be avoided at mm. all costs. All right. Thank you, Nama. Very mm. sad story. Yeah. Very sad. All right, um, your story, Jela. Yeah, President um, Tenumbu signed student loan, student loan bill into law. Hmm. Interesting times, you know. So um, they say this law is to provide easy access to higher education for indigent Nigerians through um, interest-free loans from Nigerian Education Loan Fund. And um, this was um, a bill that was sponsored by the Speaker of the Knights um, House of Representatives, Femi Bajabia Mila, um, which says that, of course, I mean, it provides um, interest-free loans to indigent um, Nigerian students. And um, it has passed the third reading at the House two weeks ago, and um, today it was signed into law. Um, well, personally, I don't know. Um, I mean, it's a good thing. But um, as with um, all things Nigeria, we need to understand the process first, you know, the eligibility criteria, you Can know. I help you? <laughs> I took my time. <laughs> Today I came for peace. <laughs> so part of the, the criteria yeah. for qualifying for this law okay. is that you would need to have a family income earning of about 500000 or or more, right? I think the minimum as a family to earn is 500,000 um, or more. You have to have two guarantors. So the conditions of those guarantors, I mean the status of those guarantors, mm. either a civil servant that has nothing less than level 12. That's director um, level. Mm? Oh, level 12. Yeah. Mm. A lawyer with a 10 year post call experience, a judicial officer can be your guarantor mm. and or a justice of peace. So mm -hmm. I think those are the criteria for you to, what's it called? Um, access access the loan. this loan. So I'm now thinking in my head, the people that can afford to have all of these people, mm -hmm. if they rally around all these people, they don't they, have to yeah, their school fees. Absolutely. Um, I don't know how they arrived at this. They arrived yeah. at this, you know. Um, is it targeted at people that are registered under the federal government workforce? Um, a lot of concerns. You know, I even tweeted it. I said, okay, with the issues around strike, mm. where I'm supposed to take four years to go to school mm. and I'm taking eight years or ten years to go to school, mm. the issues around even the quality of the education, mm. right? Um, the issues around job. Creation, right? Yeah. Job creation, no jobs. There are so many graduates right now, they don't have jobs, True. right? to fall back to. So how do we, um, how do we ensure that they, they has, they, they, there's, there's a plan, right? Mm. They, ca they can't pay back those loans. Mm -hmm. Because clients where they offer student loans, yeah. like you can literally pay it all your life. Mm -hmm. but you are guaranteed that as you are leaving that investment, you there's a job. get a job. Do you understand? Yeah. There's a job that can absorb you and that can immediately start to, you can do like de mm -hmm. de um, um, debits on, yeah, yeah. on your salary account, mm -hmm. right? So I like it. It's a good way to move forward. Mm. I'm sure a lot of companies that have been thinking about loans and all of that, they would wake up. Nigerians, I think, in, in fairness, I have seen that the people that even pay back loans more are the people that are in the market, oh, yeah. all those market Absolutely. women. Oh, they are the yeah. ones that are afraid of loans yeah. more. So yeah. Yeah. the target market for this loan would definitely, they would do, but I'm saying that the criteria, that 500,000 uh, family income, it might not work. It won't work. Because, I, don't I mean, think they, a, they have a, that. someone who is from a really, from an extremely, you know, poor background. Mm. That means you can't go exactly, to school. Exactly. And that is supposed to be the target for exactly, this. Exactly. Do you get Exactly. So, please, they, they need to, we need to fine tune yeah. and review. <laughs> On the issue of Cookathon, you know, I said, me, I will follow this game because mm. let it not look like because mm. she's not popular, she's not mm. famous. Mm. Uh -huh, we're not talking about her. Mm. No. Chef Dami. Mm. That means Ade Perusi, who is attempting to set a Guinness World Record, um, has been offered a uh, two-weeks cook tour 
by someone in the U.S. They are hoping that they would um, be able to get her to come on a two-week cook tour um, by, um, by the time she's done and all of that, which is fantastic. Someone offered a 100000 I think a commissioner went there and all of that. The only challenge me I have with the dummy is that the food, the presentation, Biko, <laughs> you know, I mean, there's a finesse to food. I don't know. It's not a, I eat for with me. Yes, yeah, so for me, I eat with my eyes. It mm. is what I see first mm. that we that we call my tummy. Because literally, I can starve myself if the food doesn't look like what mm. I want to put in my mouth, right? Mm. I think her presentation, she's, she's is an attempt. I mean, this is she's not the only person. There's somebody else that is gone in for 140 hours. Now I just saw another one, 200, 200 hours, right? But something that um, this lady, Adiola. Faye, who I think that's her name. The, she's a popular blog blogger. Posted on 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 online, she talked about the 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 criteria for uh, approvals, like the approval process. So she said, so this did Chef Dami get approval from Guinness World Record before embarking on the 120 hour cookathon? Mm. Uh, applications takes about 12 to 16 weeks to review. She says she's just asking for a friend because she didn't screen grab the criteria that. The first step of any successful world record um, title holder mm -hmm. is the application, right? Here you will find all the information needed to make your own application, including the different options, what to expect from the process, and the frequently asked questions. So she then posted something around step four. It says, complete and submit the form. When filling in the form, you can choose if you want to purchase a priority application which means you can receive your guidelines in five working days. Um, charges apply. A standard application will take up to 12 weeks to receive your guidelines and sometimes longer if there is a high demand. Please check the current waiting period to get up-to-date information on the waiting times. Um, due to large volume of application, the current waiting period for all applications is a maximum of 16 weeks. Our current waiting time for reviewing evidence for attempting rec records is a maximum 16 weeks. So, Ilda Bachi. Four months. Ah, yes, 16 weeks. You can imagine. Mm -hmm. So, um, um, our current waiting time for answering online correspondence is a maximum two weeks. So, already, Hilda Bachi's um, uh, record is in, is in the queue because they have a long list. So expedited, um, what's it called, approvals, yeah. maybe she paid it. Now, even the question around this, because when, when this lady brought this up, people are even asking, I hope Hilda also went through, through the yeah. application mm -hmm. process mm -hmm. appropriately. Because mm -hmm. it's quite an interesting thing. Everybody wants to become a cookathon. If you know um, Okwayemi Famaki, he's a popular food blogger. Mm -hmm. he, gave like, he gave like five different... Uh, what's it called for food lovers and food chefs and all of that? Mm. He gave different five related. This was just this is he said he just let me just pick five, but there are multiple uh, records to break that they should just leave Hilda's um, exactly. Award, no, that's um, the thing with Nigerians. Hilda's, uh, whatever. We jump on the wagon and then it's like a trend. Everybody, everybody wants, wants to, to do, do cookathon. Yeah, right? everybody wants to do because, it. Because, but you see, the thing they keep missing out mm. is that the reason it was like, look at this girl now. The reason we're just following up is because let it not look like we're being part, um, partial. Mm -hmm. The truth is that Hilda's team did a great job in mm -hmm. that PR, right? In making sure they pushed it and all of that. What's the, t the PR team for this lady? And you could even tell for Hilda that there was a lot of um, work that went no, into it. No, it was a lot, a lot of, of work. planning. Everything. A, a even lot. the cookware, a everything. Lot. The kitchen, yeah. the structure. Yeah. Yeah. It was all built for that purpose. Yeah. 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 Hey. It is well. I wish Dami all the best, and I hope she applied properly, you know, so that the mm. the the event will not go in vain. And uh, yeah, her labor yeah. will not. Her labor will not be lost. Mm. All right. So on that note, we want to come back and discuss our president's speech, um, and of course the recently signed um, student bill. Stay with us. We'll be right back.